It, it kind of started at school, really. Um, uh, when I won a poetry competition when I was 16, um, to my utter surprise, um, and uh, and the the English teacher who judged the competition sort of said to me proudly afterwards, if if you worked at this, you could you could make a living out of it. Um, and as I wasn't much good at doing anything else except writing, I thought that one day perhaps I should try and do that. Yeah. So that, that's where the ambition began. I mean, do you remember the first, first was it a poem that you wrote? I remember, uh, yeah, I, it was a poem I wrote. Uh, I can't remember it. Uh, I'm afraid <laughs> <laughs> it's a long time ago, and I haven't got I haven't got a copy. Um, but uh, yeah, so I won this competition, and uh, and uh, it gave me it, it began you know lit that kind of um, that spark of ambition yeah. to to be a, a, a freelance writer. I mean, was the progression then into like playwrights and and actually writing books? Was that a natural progression or? Uh, well, I'm, I mean, I, I began life thinking of myself as a poet, really, uh, and I did I did teach for. A, but six or seven years, and yeah. during that time, just wrote a lot of poetry and uh, and had a couple of uh, uh, pamphlets published, um, and then I, and then I kind of uh, just fell into playwriting. A friend of mine asked me to write a play for a youth theatre that yeah. he was running. So I'd never written a play before, but I, I had a go, um, and then really fell in love with playwriting, um, and and then kind of switched from that to more or less just writing plays. I still, I still uh, kept up writing poetry and, and still do write poetry, but I, I guess I, my living has been earned writing plays. Writing plays. Yeah. I mean, do you have a favourite between poetry and play, playwrights and novel? Would there be a favourite that you enjoy most? In doing? Yeah, in, uh, in actually writing. Uh, well, in the act of writing, you, you, what you need to do is commit to that particular writing so that in a sense of enjoyment you're, you're enjoying it in the moment but I guess if I had to choose it would be playwriting it's yeah. the thing that gives me the most the most satisfaction most fulfillment and I imagine it it's quite hard I mean when you were at school your teacher sat you down and said you know if you do work at this you could succeed but I imagine it's a very hard business and it would take a lot of passion for the subject to actually take it on full time wouldn't it oh it does yes and and you I mean I had to wait for the right time or what I felt was the right time to uh, to leave uh, full time employment and, and take that plunge yeah. uh, into writing. It was the birth of my son that actually did that because we decided that one of us should stay at home, and I elected to stay at home. and uh, And I was having some sex, success already as a writer yeah. by then, so t uh, we decided I should stay at home, look after the baby, and see how it went and uh, I haven't gone back to work since. And so where do your ideas come from? I mean, do you, do you keep a notepad at the side of your bed? Do you, and, and when an idea springs to mind, do you note it down? Or? I do do that, yeah. I have, yeah. I, I, I've got hundreds of notebooks I've kept over the years, and I've always got a notebook one with me now. Uh, and yes, so whenever an idea comes for, for something, either a poem or a play or a, or a story, I'll just, I'll just jot it down, note yeah. it down, yeah. Um, uh, I, I guess the inspiration generally comes from um, uh, an interest in myth and folk tale and legend. Uh, that's kind of what links all the work that seems quite diverse. <coughs> excuse me, seems quite diverse uh, on, uh, on the outside. The kind yeah. of subjects and themes that I write about, but it is a, an interest in myth and folk tale. And not just playwrights and poems. Um, you've, you've also you've also got novels. Yeah. Or your novelist. Can you tell yeah. me about those? Uh, well, again, it happened by accident, really. Um, I, I was work an agent wrote to me and said, "I'm an agent. Uh, would you like to write a children's novel?" Um, which, which, which is, I was quite taken aback by. So yeah. I said, "Okay, I'll have a go." Um, so, uh, so yes, I, uh, under her guidance, I wrote my first uh, novel for young people because she yeah. was she was uh, an agent for children's novels. Yeah. Um, and uh, and so I wrote a few of those really and. Um, yeah, that was okay. That was good, but uh, but, but still, playwriting pulled yeah. me back. Yeah. Because I know as well, you've ad you've adapted things um, for the stage, like Tess the Durbervilles. Mm -hmm. I mean, what's the di what do you prefer, writing your own stuff, or is it nice to actually look at someone else's you know text and, and adapt it? It, it is. It, it, th there is a satisfaction uh, in taking uh, a novel, say like like Tess of the Durbervilles. Uh, or Fahrenheit 451, which I've also uh, uh, adapted, uh, and and just solving the problem, I suppose, in a way of how you turn this thing that's written for the page yeah. into a piece of either stage action or radio action, um, and 
uh, and doing that, um, you, you learn a lot of the skills that are necessary to, to, to be a playwright. You, you yeah. learn w what to do to make something work yeah. on stage or on radio. And I can see your heart is the stage. You've recently set up a theatre company based in the Midlands for people in the Midlands. What's that all about? Uh, well, it's uh, myself and a director, uh, Glenn Buglass, uh, and in fact my daughter, uh, who is a, a poet and choreographer uh, and a musician called yeah. Tony Barrett. We, uh, we've been working together on, on a number of projects uh, off and on over the years, and we decided to, to, to kind of to consolidate it by creating a theatre company called uh, Regional Voice Theatre, which we dedicated to creating performance work uh, that was rooted in, in, in the black country yeah. uh, and was for primarily for black country people. Uh, and I say performance work because it includes theatre and poetry. Okay. Um, uh, and uh, so yeah, we, and we've we've um, we've had one successful one-man play on the on the road for nearly two and a half years now. And there's one tonight, isn't there as well? There's a, a rehearsed reading of a new play tonight uh, at the Arena Theatre. Yeah. Uh, the play is called The Darleston Dogfight. Okay. Um, and uh, we secured some Arts Council funding to run a project in collaboration with the Arena Theatre, uh, running a series of workshops, working with some actors towards a rehearsed reading tonight okay. and the hope is that that generates enough interest for it to get a little more money from the Arts Council to do a, a full production. And that play as well, that's based in the Black Country um, years and years ago, isn't it? Absolutely, yeah. It's, it's based on a legendary character called Ruff Moey who lived around here about 200 years ago who was a bit of a hellraiser, um, a minor drunkard uh, involved in blood sports, yeah. last person to sell his wife in Wensby Market. Um, yeah, an all-round hellraiser. So it's it, it's based it's based on the legends and the ballads yeah. about his life. And how important for you is it to keep it local? I mean, you've got a theatre company local. The play you've written it's based around the Black Country. It's it, it's it is important because that that's, that's the ethos of the company is is to create is to create this local work, um, and uh, 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 which tells the stories yeah. uh, that maybe don't get told. Um, so often, yeah, uh, and stories that, that local people can relate to. And just before we go, um, this Saturday, um, there's something going on at the Warsaw Arboretum, isn't there? Poetry. That's right. Yeah, that, that's another another regional voice collaboration. This time yeah. with, with the Arboretum, uh, I've been running a series of, of poetry events at the visitor centre. Uh, and this Saturday, um, we've got um, poets by the lake. Brilliant. And anyone can, anyone <coughs> can come along? Anyone could come along. Brilliant. It's for everyone, and it costs five pounds.